would you like to use a downrigger from my kayak? You should think about this because this is a great method to fish much more successful throughout the year. Mm, I refused to think about it for a long, long time. I did this failure and you shouldn't do this because a downrigger gives you uh, much more opportunities to be successful in fishing. And well, I didn't thought about it for a long time, but the truth is, as you know, that during the year, um, the habits of the fish will change with the water temperature. And some species, like trouts of any kinds or chars, they are seeking for deep water. And uh, I wasn't able to fish there um, during the summer season, lake trouts, brown trouts, chars. They're deep down in the water and uh, I couldn't really successfully fish for trout or chars. And I just had no idea about using a downrigger. But this is the method, the opportunity to be successful throughout the entire year. And so I uh, had a friend of mine, he was a successful downrigger fisherman and he brought me to the subject. I built my own downrigger. I'd like to share with you how it's done. And then you can go fishing and double or triple your success. Well, first of all, I checked the web for those downriggers that you can buy right out of the, out of the box, ready to use. And uh, because we're a yak fisher, man, you need a downrigger that is um, as small as possible, uh, some sort of thing that is uh, possible to utilize on a limited space kayak. And the one I found, um, uh, I beg your pardon, but this is not what I want to have on my kayak. They look very simple, uh, plastic models, uh, not really something uh, that I like to operate. They have no uh, the, the spool has no gear ratio, you have to do it by your hand, uh, there's, the ratio is then one by one, you, and there's no way to just release the downrigger, you have to wind it down, if you have to wind it up, and it comes with steel wire cables, which doesn't work uh, properly, because steel wire cables are singing in the water, yeah, it's a steel wire cable under tension, like a guitar string, if it starts to vibrate, it makes a lot of sound in the water, this is not what I want to have, and uh, it, it just doesn't work. So I came up with the idea to build my own Don Rigger. And I was very successful in doing so. And I did it. And I uh, spent a lot of thinking about how it should be done. And I did it. And I'll show you later. And then I tried it out. And it worked so perfectly. So perfectly. Uh, I'm totally convinced. I'm enthusiastic about this thing. That I'd like to share with you how you can build your own downrigger on any budget. Uh, and see, guys, this is the most important point. You can build this thing that I'm going to show you in a moment on any budget. It is not a question of money. There's not much to spend, but, and this is the point, you have to choose the right hardware because it's just the kind of hardware that you have to use to make it successful. Yeah. And you can, you can use any used stuff, cheap stuff, stuff from eBay, whatever. It's not a question of budget. And how that is done, I'll show you now. First, you need an old fishing rod that you're not using any longer, preferably a carbon fiber rod, just because of the weight. Um, then you do need an ordinary rod holder that you pr most probably use anyway on your yak, but it should be someone that you're not actually using because it's, uh, it will be used for this downrigger uh, exclusively. And it will be one solid thing like a rock in the end. Then you do need a reel, which we have to talk about because this is the most important part of the downrigger. And there are some issues that you should think about uh, while choosing a reel. And you need a roller ring from the big game fishing where the um, big game fisher, fishing rod come with, the tip ring, the roller ring. 
and you need some braided line, very important. And then we're almost done. And uh, we put these components together and there are some issues, some do's and don'ts that you should know. And once you've got the point, you build your own downrigger and you will fish successful uh, after having this done and you trying it out. You will be astonished. You will, it's overwhelming how good this thing will work. Now, you know, to start with, you just take a, uh, an ordinary uh, rod holder. I'm using the Scotty 270 rod holder. It's a little more uh, stiff, and that's what we need because there is some tension and weight uh, going along with the downrigger while operating it. So don't take that light one rod holder. Take a little more strong one, like the, as I said, the, stocky, uh, the Scotty 270. Also, what you need is a solid socket. What I do not, what I didn't, what I didn't do is to use that single gear head that you can put on a single mounting rail to slide it in, uh, wind it, lock it down, and put the rod holder on top. That doesn't work because there's, as I said before, there's a lot of tension on uh, on the downrigger, and not just because of the weight, but also because of the downrigger line. Uh, that hangs down in the water and there is some drag force being created and this also hangs on that single gear uh, uh, gear head and this is not appropriate. Instead, you just for little money buy the socket uh, for that rod holder that you can put right onto the edge of the kayak. It has four screws where you screw it down and actually I put a metal plate from the bottom to give it a little more stiffness so that the force is spread out to a larger area that makes it bomb proof. Um, then you need that rod, the fishing rod. Carbon fiber one would be perfect and we just need the lower part. And let's assume we have chosen the right reel. I'll talk about the reel later. But you put that lower part of the fishing rod together with the reel uh, into that rod holder and find a perfect position where it just sits perfectly. And when you found that position, you mark the end of the fishing rod where it sticks out of the rod holder. And this part will be just cut right at the end of the, of the rod holder. Uh, just because we do not want to stick anything inside the cockpit of the kayak. The space is limited, so we don't want to have that. And we don't need it. On the other side of the fishing rod, you make the length a total maximum of two foot in length. And this is a very, very important thing to think about because the arm of the downrigger should be as short as possible and this is for one good reason but this will influence the success significantly uh, because if the arm is too long of the downrigger just to give you an idea let's assume you have a three four foot long arm just for any reason because you find it beautiful or so <laughs> uh, just just for your imagination a long arm outboard and you're lowering a, a weight of any kind, a downrigging weight. And let's assume you're uh, fishing in deep water. Let's assume maybe somewhere between 50 and 90 feet or such. You have to realize that once you're trolling through the water, it's not just the weight hanging down there, it's also the fishing line. And as I said before, that fishing, that uh, excuse me, the downrigger line and the fishing line, both, they create a lot of, of uh, drag force in the water. And this drag force creates a momentum to the tip of your uh, downrigger. And this will make your kayak turn around because you have that drag force just on one side. And to make it happen that you can go straight with your yak, you have to counteract that momentum with your rudder. But you can imagine, at a certain depth, in combination with a certain speed, a certain drag force is created, and at a certain point, your rudder, rudder travel is limited to counteract that force. First of all, you do not want to drive your downrigger with the maximum deflection of the water, because that will, br that will break you down. It's a lot of resistance in the water if you turn the rudder just around. And you still want to have some minimum steerability left and right. 
So we have to think about the downrigger arm. Make it as short as possible so that the center of gravity walks from the outside more to the inside of the kayak. So come as close as possible the downrigger to the side of the yak. That is one good reason. And that is that a two, a two foot arm in length. I have chosen that length because I didn't uh, turn the downrigger 90 degrees outboard. I turn it 45 degrees a little bit ahead and to the right in my particular case because, and this is another point, I want to reach out this arm a little bit in front so that I'm able to let the downrigger line come down just beside my fish finder's transducer. And this is a very important point. So in the end, how long this arm will be or how short it can be is also a question where your downrigger line uh, will be as close to the fish finder's transducer. That is another story that needs to be solved. Because we need to identify the downrigger weight on our fish finder at all times. Now, if you have your uh, fish finder transducer on, on front of a yak and a downrigger in the back or vice versa, and the distance is too far, then it easily happens that the downrigger weight walks outside the cone of the sonar while dragging through the water because the weight will be dragged behind the boat, certainly, depending on the depth that you have your downrigger in. So we have to think about this. So come as close as possible to the transducer. And this is also what, what uh, uh, requires you to think about to get the right length of the arm. So it's not just any length, as close to the yak, as close to the transducer. And this primarily then is the arm that you do require. So we have to think about that. So you cut the top of the fishing rod and a carbon fiber rod has a hollow uh, shape. So there's that hole in the tip uh, of the cut rod. And what we do now, we take that roller ring from the big game fishing and it has a little extension about that size. But I, what I did is to give it a little more stiffness, I just take an ordinary a screw and I, drew, I put it in just by a screwdriver into the hole of the roller ring so I have a little extension and then I could slide this one into the hole in the inside of the fishing rod and you just fix it by using epoxy this is bomb proof a little epoxy around that screw a little bit inside of that fishing rod you pop it in it dries out bomb proof that's what we need and the benefit is that uh, the weight is pretty heavy, uh, relatively heavy. So any, anything that we can use to make it more easy for the fishing line to be dragged uh, up and down is something that will help us to make it easy. And a roller ring makes it easy. So this is a good thing to do. If you take an ordinary leader ring of a fishing rod, that may work for some, quite some time, but sooner or later the line will be damaged be just because of the weight and the tension that you constantly uh, have on this ring. And maybe the line will be damaged, sooner or later you have to change it, or the ring will be damaged, or both. So forget about it. Take a roller ring, end of story, and problems are solved. So the most important thing that is needed and this is the fishing reel that we're utilizing for our downrigger this is the heart and if you make it if you want to make it 100 percent perfect you'd have to choose the right reel not any reel i tell you what you're going to choose because um, the subject is you have to operate a heavy weight something between one and two kilograms doesn't matter exactly but it's a it's it's a, a constant weight that you have to operate and operating a, a weight constantly in your yak is exhausting so if you picture the uh, downriggers that you can buy ready to use out of the box think about it they have no gear ratio at all but a fishing reel has a gear ratio so this would help second 
uh, a ready-to-use downrigger that you can buy has uh, a spool that can be operated and, and can be locked. And this is the problem. You have to unlock it for letting it down or to wind it up first. On, you have to lock it all the time. So either you take two hands or it's a complicated thing with one hand while holding that spool because the weight is hanging down there. You need your other hand to lock or unlock. This is, this is nonsense. And a fishing reel, as you know, you wind it in, you stop, and the weight will stop. So you can operate a downrigger using a fishing reel one-handed. And this is what we need. And you have to have a, uh, a reel on your downrigger that operates without any noises. It has to be silent at all times. Believe me, something. If there is something on my yak that makes any noise, it doesn't matter whatever it is, besides myself. This is not wanted. I do not accept any noise on my yak. And a built-down rigger makes a lot of noise. It's a plastic thing, a plastic part, forget about. And it's not just that, that simple spool that it comes with that makes some noise. It also is the steel wire cable. Talk about that in a moment. So the reel, the most important reel. What kind of reel do we need? You cannot use a bait caster. You cannot use a bait caster because the drag force that we need is quite significant. And we're not just talk about the numbers. You may say, well, my bait caster has uh, five kilograms of uh, brake force. Fine. But this is not appropriate. It's a tiny little thing and a heavy weight. Sooner or later, this doesn't get together. What we need, and this is the point, now listen up guys, you need an overhead reel, an overhead reel. An overhead reel has a ton of advantages over any other reel. First, it is a little more heavy duty than a bait caster. Second, they do not have that leader ring going left and right because we do not need this. It's not needed. And it makes noises while releasing. It goes left and right. We don't want any noise on my on the yak, right? Second, those reels have much more brake force. Want it. And the most important thing is that an overhead reel has a sliding brake. We need a sliding brake to release the down rigger. Now a bait caster has that button to cast it. It doesn't work. Why? Sooner or later, while having a bait caster reel on your downrigger, you will punch that button by accident because it sticks out on top and you will punch the button, whatever, and what happens then? The spool is released to drag zero and your weight rushes down to the ground. Second failure will be that you operate the handle, the spool snaps in and the weight stops within a split of a second, your line snaps, weight is gone. That is the second worst case. The worst case is that your fishing rod with the line is already connected to the downrigger when that is happening. And what is then, uh, what happens next is that your fishing rod is dragged overboard if you haven't put it in the rod holder yet, or if it's in the rod holder, it will break. Forget about a bait caster. We need an overhead reel with a sliding brake. Because then click by click, very easily, just one click by releasing, you lower your downrigger, like slow motion, at any speed that you want, and you slide it up, you stop the downrigger weight, it is totally silent, you wind it up, and this is another benefit of an, of an overhead reel, it has a longer handle, and a longer handle gives you more force onto your uh, downrigger spool. It is much more easy to wind the weight up. And by the sliding brake, you easily let it down. It's a smooth operating uh, machine and silent. Well, think about it. Now what I'm, I'm using, I have to confess, I bought myself a brand new reel because I want to have it 100%, but you can use any overhead reel. A used one from eBay, it doesn't matter. 
just for you to know, check out the Okuma Metalloid. Uh, it's called the N52, I think. Okuma Metalloid. It comes in three different versions. I have a small version, but it's still heavy duty. And the benefit of that reel is eight kilograms of brake force, holds enough line, a ton of line. I have 300 meters of braided line on there. That, uh, that is enough for the next 10 years. And the sliding brake is so beautifully to, to, to adjust. And another benefit that this particular reel has, it comes also with a two gear erasure. So I also have a low gear setting that also facilitates the operation of the downrigger. So one-handed, very easily, I wind my weight up and down. If you want to do this all day long, you will be very, very, very thankful in having these details on your uh, downrigger reel. If you want to make it work, as I said, overhead reel. So, and then we're done. A word on the line, and again, uh, the comparison to those ones that you can buy right out of the box. They come with a steel wire cable. Guys, steel wire cables for downrigging from a kayak, from a kayak, is a no-go. We have to divide between downrigging from a, from a power uh, boat or from a kayak. That's a different story. On an on a engine... Uh, powered boat that when you're trolling and downrigging this is another story you, you travel pretty fast like trolling for salmon or something but on a kayak we are very slow on our way while trolling and um, we make a lot of noise in the water if we're using a steel wire cable it's like a guitar string it, it guitar string is a steel wire cable as well is it it's under tension intentionally and if you vibrate that string it makes a perfect tone and guess what your downrigger with a steel wire cable is a guitar in the water because once you lowered it there's tension on by the weight you travel through it the steel wire cable starts to vibrate and you have always that singing noise depending on the depth and on the strength of the weight different tones so you can make some music that's not what i want my boat is called the silent hunter and believe me one thing, I will remain it that way. It will be a silent boat, whatever it takes. So what you choose is a braided line of a certain strength. And I'm using just a cheap braided line. It has a 50 kilogram in weight. You can use 40 or 30 kilograms in weight, but that one I took was just cheap. Took me, it was about 10 bucks or so for 300 meters of braided line, 50 kilograms. That'll do it. And now it's uh, time to operate the downrigger. You use a weight, do you? Okay, what's, is there some issues with the weight? Yes, there is. This is my opinion. You may have a, another one, which is fine. Of course, in the end, it will a little bit more dependent on, this, on a typical depth that you will troll. Uh, but just to give you the idea what the issue is with the weight. Now, as I said, the more drowned rigger line is in the water, the greater the drag will be that is created by traveling through the water and dragging that line through the water column. And we like to shorten and to, to minimize that drag force as much as we can. Now using a lighter weight is something that you can use, but to reach the same depth as a heavier type, it requires much more line outside your downrigger, creating much more drag. Not wanted. And a lighter wake it will be dragged far behind the boat and it walks, as I said, out of the cone of a sonar so that you cannot see it any longer. But we need to see the, the depth of the downrigger at all times times because if you do want to troll uh, slightly above the surface we need to identify obstacles in advance so we can rise and lower if it's needed the downrigger and we do not just hang up at some obstacles so the closer you, you let's say the more you precisely have to use your downrigger you have to see it on the fish finder so a heavier weight does this job it first goes deeper into the water, it shortens the line that is in the water, and it stays within the cone of your sonar. 
That's what we need. That's what we need. And just because you may think, well, but it's a heavy weight. Yes, but it has probably six, seven, eight hundred grams more than the weight that you should thought about, that, that you sh thought about before. But it's 800 grams maybe in downforce. But in drag force, in terms of drag force, the lightweight is a more a problem. It's more easy to operate, maybe, yes. It is 800 grams more heavy, maybe, yes. But the downforce on a yak of about 800 grams, was that a pair of shoes? Forget about it. So a heavier weight gives you some good benefits over a lighter one. And there's a third reason why a uh, more heavier downrigger weight uh, is of your benefit, and this is hooking the fish. Now, if, if you picture uh, a, a powerboat, a uh, motor-driven fishing vessel that is downrigging, they go ahead with a certain speed, let's say two up to three miles an hour maybe, maybe faster. So they will hook the fish anyway. If a fish strikes in the end, it will be just dragged and will be hooked. But on a kayak, that's a different kind of story because we are much slower on our way through the water. We still attract the same fish and they, the fish also will strike. But we need to hook the fish. And because we do not have the fishing rod in our hands to give it to counteract the strike of the fish, there need be some other force that, uh, that is hooking the fish and this is the weight. So the momentum of the weight in the water is that what we're using when the fish strikes in the end. It has to hook himself by pulling the weight. And the lighter that weight is, the less force is being transferred to the hook that is driven into the mouth of the fish. The more heavier weight gives you more momentum in hooking the fish. So that is three good reasons. For using a little more heavier weight and if you ask me what I'm running I'm running the cannonball in my particular case but you can use any other weight I just I just bought it I found it perfect for me and the weight is 1.8 kilograms 1.8 kilograms and it's perfect for trolling in 20 30 foot of water because the line just goes straight down perfect it stands there but I'm also able to fish with 1.8 kilograms in depth of hold your breath between 90 and 150 feet of water. And I do it successfully by trolling for chars. And in fact, it works so beautifully. I never fished in a depth of 150 feet. It, it, it just came, didn't came to my mind to do that. Not even while spot fishing some jigging or something. I, that was too deep out of my mind. But since I'm running my downrigger, I'm downrigging in 150 feet and I hook chars throughout the entire year because now with my downrigger, I'm able to fish in those real deep depths. So this is an, a, a complete new dimension. Before I was using a downrigger, there were some, let's say, some sort of seasons for my species to fish. Lake trouts, brown trouts, chars. Most of the time that was the fishing season was in spring, when fence time was over. And when the water starts to warm up and the temperature lays in my lake starts to stabilize the, the warm water on top, the cold water below, the chars and trouts, they're seeking the cold water which they love, but it's far down in the lake. So I wasn't able to get there, so that I had some sort of fishing season for trout to chars. But now, using a downrigger, <laughs> I can fish at any depth where my uh, fish that I'm after will stay throughout the entire year if you want to. 90 feet, 100 feet, 150 feet, I don't care. I'm going to get down there and I catch lake trouts. It's summertime when the, when the time outside temperature is at 30 degrees plus. Imagine that. I'm still able to troll for lake trouts successfully. Is that a reason? Yes, it is. So, go ahead. I do hope you caught some fire on this and you should give up because it's the perfect thing. And once you do it, you will continue to do it. And the first thing that you think about while having your yak in the water is your downrigger to get it out. <laughs> I hope, as I said, you caught some fire. Go ahead, build your own downrigger and have fun. 
Thanks for watching. That was my first tutorial for the year 2018. Guys, tight lines. See you next time.